No, I was queuing the video guy, so I didn't want to broadcast. Okay. So next up today, we have Michael Hull, who's here to... Um, we've had this promise of phones, convergence, desktop apps uh, for many years, and that reality is almost upon us, and Michael Hall is here to demonstrate exactly where we are. Turn your microphone on. Is that better? Yep. All right. So uh, as Nathan said, we've been promising this convergence thing for about two years now, and I am super excited that I'm finally able to actually show it off live to all of you. Um, but before we get to the actual demo, there's a couple boring slides that I wanted to just go through because we do have some misconceptions about what it is we mean when we talk about convergence. Um, so the first thing is that we're not just talking about putting a phone UI on the desktop. Everybody is afraid that we're just going to do like Windows 8 and it's just going to be giant tiles all over and it's going to be touch oriented when you're trying to use a keyboard and mouse. That is not what we're trying to do. We are going to make an actual desktop that runs from your phone. It's going to look like a desktop. It's going to feel like a desktop. It's going to have the desktop features you expect to be there, but it's going to be running on phone hardware. So when we talk about convergence, what we mean, we mean a couple different things, really. We mean either running everything from one device. So you've got your phone, and that is your personal computer. You take it everywhere you go. You use it as a phone when you're on the go. You use it as a desktop when you're at your office or when you're at home or you plug it into your TV and it's your home media center. So that's one device running in different form factors to do different things. The other thing it could be is just one code base across all of your devices. So if you do have a laptop and a phone, and you don't want to ditch your laptop to use your phone, you can still use the same software on both. So you've got the same apps on both, you've got all the same features on both, you've got all the same uh, data format supports on both. You don't have to worry about, okay, if I do this work on my laptop, will I be able to access that same work on my phone? Because it's going to be the same software running in both locations. The second misconception is that convergence, going from a phone to a desktop, is just about scaling up, just taking what's there and making it bigger. And that's when you end up with things like giant buttons that you don't need when you've got a mouse. So there's a lot more things to consider than just going big. We offer a few different things to make that easier for developers. Some of them are baked right in, so you don't even really have to think about it. So things like grid units, which are a smart measurement of screen real estate that's not dependent on pixels, it's not dependent on pixel density, it's not dependent on screen size, but it's going to change based on the form factor and the use case for that form factor. So a button on your phone, you're going to want to be a different size than a button on your TV or a button on your laptop, even if they all have the exact same pixel resolution. We also have a, a smart set of font sizes that go from small to extra large. And it's the same thing. It's not tied to physical dimensions. It's not tied to pixel sizes. It's going to change depending on what it should be for that form factor. Those are built into the toolkit, so you really don't have to worry about that as a developer. You just use those instead of using pixel sizes, and everything scales right for you. The other two things we offer are conditional layouts and adaptive layouts. And these are what let your app transform the way it works and the way it displays itself, depending on the form factor and the use cases that you're supporting on that form factor. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, all, three, all four of these uh, in just a minute, actually just now. So um, if any of you were paying attention earlier, you may have noticed that I am running this on my phone. Uh, right, right, right here, and I'm going to be careful not to unplug it because we had to, to find a Frankenstein setup of wires and converters to actually make this work. Um, so you can't, oh, you can see the launch a little bit. So first thing this, that you'll notice is that when it's running as a desktop, the launcher icon order flips, so it's now starting from the top going down just like it is on your desktop. But everything works and acts the same way. Let me put my notes here. So uh, first thing I want to show is the browser, and hopefully the Wi-Fi will work here. All right, so this is our browser. This is the phone browser running on the phone. You can see if I shrink it down, it becomes just like what you have on the phone with the tabs at the bottom. It's not really good on a mouse and keyboard, which is why we've changed it. So when you're on the desktop and it gets bigger, now your tabs move up to the top. It's not 
closing your pages and reopening them. It's just relocating where the user interface component is that lets you access those. The other one I wanted to show off is the file manager. Here we go. So the browser was using uh, a special tabs component that was built for the browser and is going to slowly make its way into the UI toolkit. Um, but the, the file manager is using the conditional layouts, which is already there. Um, when it's in phone mode, the places panel there on the side will uh, shrink and go away into a drop down or into a to bottom slide up. But when it's bigger, you get to see more of it and be able to access those a little bit easier. And last but not least, I'm going to give a little bit of a plug to my own app here. Uh, this is my Reddit app. And let's see, I'm going to make this smaller so I can actually show. So this is the adaptive page layouts. This is something that was just introduced into the latest version of the toolkit. It's going to be in the next OTA release. And this is what's really going to make it easy for developers to make apps that scale up and down all along the way. So the way it works is instead of one stack of pages that you just add one on top of the other, you kind of hand off that responsibility to this toolkit. And you just say, I want to add a page either at the current location or the next location. And it decides whether or not you've got enough room. So here, if I go, let's see. I have no idea what these are, so hopefully it's nothing offensive. All right, so you, you've got your uh, Reddit post here. You open the article. Uh, you click on comments, and it's going to stick it on top of that because there's not enough room to display it side by side. But when I go full screen, now I've got an extra column. So now I can open up the comments, and they're over there. But then if I minimize it again, it's going to stick it right back on the page stack for you. So that makes it really easy. It, this took me about an hour of work one evening once I started getting into playing with it. So it makes it really easy for app developers to build apps that work well on the desktop and on the phone and on the tablet and eventually on the TV. So we're going to have this exact same setup at our booth for the rest of scale. It's going to be open. You can come. You can see it. You can play with it. You can ask us all kinds of questions about it. Um, please come by and see us. That's all I've got. <laughs>